Hey there, Aubrey here with uh, Earring Motorsports. So today I've got my dual rate coil over shocks off of the front torn apart because I'm revalving them. Um, I have to swap out the valving so that they work better with the bypasses that I'm putting in there. So I thought while I had them torn apart, I would uh, make a quick video showing you guys how they work and what the internals look like. Um, Cause uh, a lot of times I'm talking about dual rate coil over and bypass shocks and you can see people kind of glaze over they don't understand how they work or you know um, how they're different so here's uh here's the video i'll uh, turn this around so you can get a look at this all right so i want to start by showing you the one that's still on the car that is a dual rate coil over shock and um what it does, the reason it's dual rate is because it's got two springs, right? Right here. And there's a slider in between them. And then you can see there's a stop here <coughs> where the slider hits that. And so <coughs> right now you're operating on a stacked spring rate where it's this spring rate plus this spring rate. So if you have a 200 and a 200, you're actually operating on a 100 pound per inch spring rate when both of them are operating. When that slider hits the stopper right there, then it's just your bottom spring that's working. And so that switches you over to a 200. So you go from a 100 spring rate until it hits that stopper, and then it's gonna go to a 200 spring rate. So that is really critical for the handling on these. And where you set that stop makes a huge difference in how your car is gonna handle. So there's this shock and then right next to it is where my bypass will go and in the, in the, there's another video showing how the bypasses work um, and how they're different. All right, so here's it all torn apart. There's the springs off and the slider. I'm swapping out for some aluminum sliders that are supposed to be tougher See, that's the new slider that I'm putting in there. <clears throat> and here is the shock body. So there you go, see it's full of fluid. Now there's two different common types of coilovers. One is an emulsion coilover, and the other one is a reservoir. <clears throat> so this one has a reservoir. And basically what that's for is you have a 7 8 inch diameter sh shaft that is going in and out of this. And so you have to be able to displace that amount of fluid. An emulsion shock has the nitrogen gas mixed right in with the shock fluid so that when that shaft goes all the way in, the um, uh, nitrogen gas can compress, but it's not as efficient because it, um, it's gonna change the way your, your shock operates because there's gas mixed in with the oil. So the, the best operating shock is gonna be just pure oil and that's what the reservoir is for. So the um, shock is just filled with oil and then in, in this reservoir, <clears throat> there's a piston in here that goes back and forth and there's nitrogen on this side and oil on that side. And it, it's amazing that these things can seal up well enough to like operate like this without letting it it pass, but they, they work um, really well, and it, it's such a slick system. So here is the shaft <clears throat> and the valving. And so here is your valving right here, and this um, goes up and down inside your shock body, and it has these shim stacks on it, there you can see it pretty well. And so the oil can pass through these holes here on the, let's see, that's gonna be the compression side. So on the compression side, the oil is passing through, sorry, these two holes right here, and it's pushing against these shims in here. Okay, and then when it's rebounding, it's flowing through that hole right there and pressing against these shims here. Okay. 
And so those shims can flex and allow the oil to pass through. And that is going to be <coughs> your, uh, your different shim stacks are listed right here. So you can find this chart online. But I think right now, I can't remember what these are stock, maybe like 50, 70 or something like that. So it would be this shim stack here and that shim stack there. I can't remember what, what they are factory, but um, what we're going to is a 30, 30. So because I'm putting the bypass shocks on here, I don't need that much resistance in the coil over because you're really doing most of the work um, in the bypass. So these are my new shim stacks that are going in and all I have to do is swap those out and put this all back together and then I'm putting different springs on it too. I had had stiffer springs on the bottom. Uh, I had 250 pound springs on the bottom before because I was running through my spring rate and bottoming out a lot um, on the big jumps. So I uh, get this all put back together and um, show you it with them installed. All right, there they are, all installed. So I've got to make some preload adjustments and I might have to swap out a spring or two to get it dialed in just right. All right, well, thanks for watching my video. Um, you know, just a standard disclaimer, I am not a uh, suspension tech. I'm just learning as I go. So, you know, take this video for what it is and um, like and subscribe to my channel for uh, future videos and content. Thanks.